This video demonstrates the transformations that took place 18 months later. So six months after the first stage that we've just discussed previously. And of course, it's very clear that this boy is already very, very far away from that initial stage that he started from. And I'd like to remind that, well, before, you know, these pictures that we're seeing here at the beginning of ABR demonstrated the result of three and a half years of work. Let's say it's three years of work, like starting at half a year of age with intense rehabilitation programs involving seating, uh, training and involving all various kinds of training, involving the stretching, splinting and everything. Well, it didn't include any surgical or any other like really invasive procedures. We closed the conversation in the previous part, pointing out that he was still unable to extend his legs, right? And therefore was unable to have the tailor sitting position. So things have clearly changed. Now he's comfortable and capable of getting the initial room for the sitting position. So he is able, his sitting platform has much improved. He has developed the space between the rib cage and the pelvis. He has extra room for the movement of the head and that extra freedom of the shoulder girdle. And all that translates into this inverted cone of the trunk support. So let's look at the details. So one can see that he is able to reach up and use the support by one hand and actually even able to utilize his weaker left hand as well. So this is the tailor sitting on the floor. He's again having this initial cone of the stability in the tailor sitting position. So you see he is able to utilize the initial room for the arm movement as well. But it comes with limitations. That's what we'll see. See, as he's trying to move up, this movement is still challenging, right? So he's able to move at the level of the abdomen and waistline, has certain room for the movement at the level of the head and neck, but still it's an overall involvement of the body. No true selectivity of the head positioning from the upper body position. And that's what we see, right? To, to reach the toy, he has these challenges with the overall balance. Now, the position on the floor, of course, is the one that had major transformation. And you see that this less challenging weight-bearing positions, that's where you can see the room for the usage of the arms have improved significantly. He's playing with the ball and by showing this I want to return you back to these three key domains. Segmentation, weight bearing, strength and only then as the third domain the development of the voluntary purposeful function. So you see the weight bearing position in prone, transition of the weight on the elbows where he has the stage one and two, well he is then able to start working for the stage three. And the same story will be taking place in all other positions. Let me just remind you where we started from here. A year and a half ago, he was completely blocked, had no room for movement. His prone position looked like that. So he was unable to get his face out of being stuck into the floor without falling. And at the same time, his uh, arms were completely stuck. So now, he has gone through the stages of the mobility improvement, like segmentation and build up of the weight bearing strength. So this is what we're looking for with the tailor seating as well. So let's have a closer look at this action, right? On the one hand, within a confident cone of support, he's showing us the ability to start moving the ball, right? But as the arm moves slightly outwards, right, out of his available cone, immediately he has challenges and what happens? He falls to the safe ground. So what do you want to see? 
again it's very very straightforward that's what our analysis shows we want to see the expansion of those cones right expanding cones and the divisions within them so that's what we are looking for as the progress i hope you're starting to see the pattern i hope you're starting to understand how the things work and how it's possible to define the milestones so again this is the mini movements of the head this is still the areas where we want to see significant improvements although yes it's this room for the movement of the neck that gave him the ability for adjustments and position so you see at this point he still prefers this good old ball biting right so he he feels more confident when having this extra support but at the same time we really can see that the platform of sitting the mobility of the back the space between the rib cage and the pelvis all these elements have improved significantly and this view shows us very well the space between the base of the skull and the top of the shoulder as the room available for the movement of his neck so this is the hand function clearly a lot of improvements there but you can see still at this point he is kind of in between right he's using some of the older style movements some of the newer style movements you see here he prefers to have his arms hyper extended it's a more confident level of the support for him again when we look at it we say well that's an unsegmented comb we want to see the segmentation we want to see this freedom we're not looking for the straightness at this point it's not a real straightness anyone who talks about this arm being straight just simply misunderstands the concept of the immovable element here of the insufficient mobility of the elbow which stems from the slide of the shoulder blade upwards towards the neck territory so this is the change that has to happen in order to get the new room for movement but you see all the way through he is able to once he is folded well enough and kind of helps himself with extending his sitting platform by the direct contact of the chest over the legs well that's where he is able to release his arms and move into the stage three voluntary active action so on opposite when he is not there well when he doesn't utilize this extra support right because his true trunk strength is not sufficient enough then the arms are not really usable so again a very clear idea of what kind of improvements have to take place and right? so you see at this stage he prefers feels more confident with doing the bite right so these are his movements and again within the initial cone of the stability that's where he's showing us the movements of the head rotationally and up and down and that's what i pointed out just earlier rotational movements forwards backwards and tilting all three planes that's what we want to see as the progress of the segmentation however as you can see this transformation right is based significantly on this local selective achievement you see if before he was completely helpless in this position now we can see a different story he is able to bring himself back without changing much the position of the arm right and then descend downwards and that's another perspective showing you this developing strength of course in the long run we want even further release of the arms right we want to see them going further down but for that in order to achieve this one has to show the circumferential segmentation throughout the entire 
spectrum of the attachments of, of the shoulder girdle. So that's another important thing to understand. So at this stage, we are seeing the releases on the front. We're seeing some releases on the side. We're seeing the releases from the level of the neck. But these posterior levels, they're still pretty much stuck. Therefore, that's this transitional appearance. A room for movement appearing, but there is a clear identification of what kind of progress has to be achieved and what milestones are ahead. So, this is another important view. Again, at the end, we're showing the challenges. And you see, he was just playing with the, with the ball and sort of kind of feeling his way around it. But then, once he gets out of the cone, what happens? He starts falling, right? And he is not able to count the balance well enough to return himself to the starting position. But yes, that's a limitation, that's a challenge, that's a limited cone of stability, but I'd like you to pay attention to the important fact. You see, due and thanks to this room for movement between the pelvis and the rib cage, between the arm and the rib cage, head and neck level with the shoulder, improving seating platform. What is happening? His fall is pretty much safe. He doesn't go down as he used to go before this style, right? Complete lack of any protection. Or this style, going completely as a unit. Or this style. Or this style. What we are seeing, his fall is very smooth. He's not scared or bothered or whatever. As he lands, he sees the ball and proceeds to the playing process immediately. Well, as I said, that's a major change from the past, where he was really performing like a single unit. So, this way you can see how the available segmentation, available mobility gives room for movement, gives safety, gives new opportunities. Now, I want to highlight another aspect, right? You see, within the area of comfort, within the space of comfort, within the comfortable zone of the initial weight-bearing inverted comb, he is then able to find the place and then actually reach quite high and far. So, obviously, what we want to see, we want to see increasing further that zone of comfort and then respectively building up the greater cone for the arm movements as well. So that's this are these are the basic schematics that I'd like you to understand. So and to close this chapter few more interesting details. You see this is the close up view of the grab that the that he delivers in the sideways position. So you can see a very interesting thing. As he moves in sitting, there is much less of the selectivity. So relative room for movement of the shoulder is more limited. But when we look at the sideways position, this is where we can see the selective room for the movement of the shoulder. And that's a very important aspect that I consistently remind the parents uh, about. On the one hand, there are two directions here, two things to understand. On the one hand, obviously, the less demanding the position is from the weight-bearing perspective, and obviously sideways position is much less demanding them than tailor sitting, so then one can see with greater ease the local mobility, the improvements of the segmentation. That's the first thing. That shouldn't be a surprise. And the second thing is the reverse statement. Once we see these opportunities, right, that he's able to show that range, even in the sort of easier weight-bearing position, we could be quite confident that as the parents work further, as the strengthening develops, as the weight-bearing improves, 
this range which has first emerged and became evident in an easier position, such as say sideline, would become available in a more challenging position, such as sitting as well. And we'll see how does that work in the future stages. So again, that allows us to look at the like perspective of the forthcoming milestones. And you can see, obviously, in this position, he also shows much better grip comparing to what he has shown in the more challenging Taylor City. But again, once we see the grip here, we could be quite like consistent in pointing out that this is a milestone for the future in a more challenging weight bearing position. Just compare this with, with this grip, right? So you see in Taylor sitting position, he starts with an open hand. Okay, I'll do the zoom. He starts with an open hand, but then the fist closes, right? So that's the challenge that comes from the limitations well above further up in the inverted weight bearing cone. So the manifestations are at the bottom or at the more distal, at a more distant level, at the level of the hand grip, but the core challenges, they are further up, they're closer to the base. Well, here we see both, right? Better grip and then much more confident maintenance of this grip as well. Why? Because there is a lesser challenge to the show. And you can see he just easily rolls over and then throws the ball all the way back. So, 18 months later, from the initial stage, we have achieved the significant transformation when he is finally able to get the tailor sitting position on his own. We have seen that he is confident in his prone position, elbow standing, that he has started to do some crawling moves, mobility is improved everywhere, head and neck level, shoulder girdle, and so on. So this is the set of the transformations. And at the same time, we have understood what are the next phases to look at, right? The improvements of the room for movement of the shoulder girdle, and therefore the ability to get the correspondence between the intent and the action, right? You see here, that's a great picture because it shows that you see his eye gaze goes forwards, right? And the toy is here. So he can't really combine the two. You know, for better precision, he obviously needs to turn his head towards the toy, right? But although he's clearly interested, he can't do this at this stage, right? So that's an obvious limitation and that's what we want to see transforming. We want to see next level of the improvement of the segmentation, like a domain one, right? Supported and coupled together with the weight bearing strength as the basis for the purposeful, useful functional movement. So that's what we'll be looking for in the future. The ability to rotate the head to the side and then bring the ball within the sort of line of sight so that he would be able to really connect the visual and the motor coordination. So that would be another major milestone for him, both like from the functional perspective and from the perspective cognitive development uh, surrounding exploration and so on. So that's a huge important phase to look for. And again, as I already mentioned, we can identify quite clearly what are the building blocks for it. And we are going towards this goal in the indirect manner, not by training, not by forceful attempts to sort of stretch the limitations of the arm connection, but via the strengthening process, via the strengthening and the expansion of the levels of the stability, improving the mobility of the head, improving the strength of the connection of the shoulder girdle, and achieving these dimensions of movement in all direction through this, non-invasive. Well, thank you, and we'll proceed to the next phase another six months later.